Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I will show you my culling workflow, which means the process in which I sort out the images I want to keep and I want to edit. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Sorting through pictures can be cumbersome, so I want to give you some shortcuts on how to do that. Also, organizing and backing up your images is pretty important, so you will find some hints about that in this video too. And we will talk about different software tools and why they might be necessary because they make your process a lot easier. The software that I use to cull my files, to sort through my files is actually Adobe Bridge. The reason for that is that first of all, it's free to use, even though Adobe does not advertise that. Also, it supports a lot of different media files, so music files, video files, PDF files, text files, all kinds of stuff can be sorted through in Adobe Bridge. This is really an asset manager that covers a lot of things. And of course, it is built into the other network, the other pipeline of products that Adobe has to offer. If you use them, I know a lot of you have Lightroom, some even have Photoshop, which means you also have Camera Raw. And Camera Raw, if you have Photoshop, is also built into Adobe Bridge. So first of all, I want to talk about the organizing of my files, because that is also important for this process. So as you can see up here, I organize them myself. So I have a folder that is called photos. It's on my backup drive. And then in that photo folder, I have a folder for the year. Then I have a folder for the month written backwards. So it starts with the year, then the month number comes, not the month name, but the month number. This is because of the way that Windows is sorting folders. And then inside of that month folder, I have a folder for each day where I took photos. So you can see here again, it's written backwards. I have the year, the month, the day, and then I have some hints so I know what I did at that day. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm using a wide variety of different software tools, which means, for example, Adobe Bridge, Lightroom, Luminar, Photo Lab, Affinity Photo, and some of them have libraries. Some of them want to organize your images in their own folders. You can turn it off always. So that is very nice. And because of that, because I use these different software tools, I want to have control over where my files are. So there is no competition between these software tools. And also I always know where my files are and can find them again. Even years later, it is very easy for me to access these files. You should organize them in a way that feels natural to you, that is helpful to you, and maybe also supports your level of work you want to put into that. For example, I have in these uh, folders for every day also the different cameras. So these are only from my Sony a7 III, but then I have a different folder for my GoPro, and then I have a different folder for the GoPro Max and a different folder for my smartphone. So I can easily separate them and they don't mix because then I can specifically know what quality I have with that photo. That already helps me sorting through them a little bit because they're organized. And here, like I said, I only have my A7 III photos. In Adobe Bridge, when you click on tab on your keyboard, you press tab. Uh, on the left side, you can see here filters. You can see that I can also sort out what I want to see. So in this case, I only want to see the camera raw images, not the DNG files that have been created, not the TIFF files or anything else. You can see it even would show PDF stuff like that. I don't want to have that. I only want to have this. So that's good. Then when you press tap again, what happens is that you only have this kind of preview. And here is a good thing that you can do with Bridge. You can also do it with Photolab. Maybe you can do it with Lightroom. I think you can do it with Lightroom is that you can have this preview on a second screen. So this kind of tile overview, and then you have a bigger view of the individual image that you're clicking on on your main screen or the other 
other way around, whichever works best for you. And that, of course, makes the process better. And because today monitors are not that expensive, you can get a nice big monitor for about 200 bucks. So that might be a good investment for you if you want to work like that. So here's the process on how I go through that. As you can see here, this was a photo shooting that I did in Vienna at the train station. And first of all, what I'm looking for here is, we can see down here, I can uh, change the size of my thumbnails, make them bigger, make them smaller. So at the start, I want to have them fairly big. And then I look at the details here. For example, here you can see that the model is swinging that suitcase backward and forward. So you can see in each of these pictures, I have a rather large movement and I can decide what is better for the shot? Is it better in front? Is it better maybe in the back? Stuff like that. Then when I have decided on that position, I can click on the image and press my space key on the keyboard. And this gives me a larger preview. And then you can see the image. So that's already nice that you have this opportunity. And there you can look for further details. Like for example, the face expression here, it's not so great, I don't like that. So we did of course multiple run-throughs of that movement. So up here, there is some more. Here we have another one. It's kind of the same position of the suitcase, but the face is a lot nicer, so that might be better. So I can select that. And this is the process that I go through. First of all, I look at the pictures in a big overview and select the composition that I like. Then I look at the preview and I see, do I like the details in here? Uh, are they what I expect or maybe there is a better version. And then what I can also do when I have the picture big, I can click here and this will zoom into 100% and I can see is the part that is most important for me, in that case the face, is it nice and sharp or not? Or do I have to select another picture? Now at this point, we have already gone through a lot of different factors on deciding what image we like or not. Now when it comes to giving out the ratings for your image, you can decide if you want to use just the number keys or in addition want to use control key plus the number keys. You can adjust that in two different ways. Down on the right corner here, you can make a mark next to use control for labels and ratings. So this will then require you to press control and the number keys, or you can go to edit preferences and then to the sub menu labels and ratings. The benefit of that is that here you can also see the keys that are pressed as shortcuts. So you're reminded what they are and also you can turn on and off here the option so that you can see what that then looks like. And here what I do is when I mark the images, I only mark the images I want to keep. I don't mark the images I don't want to keep because that would take a lot more time, right? Because usually you want to sort out more pictures than you keep. Well, it kind of depends on what you're doing. For example, if you're on your vacation and you take not too many pictures of the individual situation, then probably you will keep more than you sort out. So in that case, the other version might be more useful. Now here comes into play what kind of software you're using, what kind of different tools you want. Because of course, this is nice for looking at pictures, but as you can see, these pictures are not edited. They are not adjusted. And the problem that arises here is when you look, for example, at pictures like this here, it is very dark. You can't really see anything. The picture is good. You can still edit it in a way. The details are all there because this is a raw picture. So when, for example, I double click on this, this is only if you have Photoshop, then camera raw is opening. And this has basically the same adjustments as you would find in Lightroom or at least very similar ones. And I can push up exposure and you can see here that I have the details in here. So no problem there. So I can open this up just to check that images, everything is okay or not. And you can see, I can still give a rating down here if I want to. I'm not going to edit anything. I'm not going to change anything. I can still cancel that, but I can decide if this image is good or not, if I want to go on editing or not. Now, if you have a lot of images like that, 
It might be useful to have a software like for example Lightroom or Luminar or Photolab where you can do an adjustment for one photo and then copy it over to the other photos that are similar and then preview them and select them easily because here I would have to go through each of them and lighten them up and see if that works or not. So maybe in that case another software might be a better choice like Lightroom, Photolab, Luminar, any of these tools that allow to copy settings over to other pictures. But that is basically the process. And when you have done that, when you give ratings to your images, again, you can sort them here. So over here you can see uh, for the ratings, I can then only show the ones with the five star ratings, which is the ones that I usually keep. When I have selected the images I finally want to edit, I will copy all of them over into an extra folder called selections. The reason for that is first of all, it gives me the safety that even years later and with different software tools, I still know which of the images I have selected, but also not all of the software tools out there can read the star markings that you give in Adobe Bridge. So you might open up the folder with all of your images in another software and not know which of the images you have selected. I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to see more about Adobe Bridge and the different settings I do and the different ways I use it, let me know in the comments and see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.